is Uganda, also known as the Pearl of Africa. About the size of the UK, Uganda is landlocked, surrounded by South Sudan, Kenya, Tanzania, Rwanda and the Democratic Republic of Congo. A country boasting spectacular scenery and sensational wildlife. Many rural areas preserve traditional ways of life, while cities such as the capital Kampala get bigger every day. Uganda has one of the fastest growing populations in the world. On average, women here have six children, and the current population of 35 million people is expected to treble over the next 50 years. And with more people comes an increasing demand for food, education and healthcare. The medical need is huge. The stories are shocking. Two people who have heard more stories than most are doctors Andrew and Sarah Hodges. The couple worked in Uganda during the 1990s and saw firsthand the vast, unmet need for plastic and reconstructive surgery. In 2001, they set up Interface Uganda. The charity has slowly grown, although its aims and ethos have stayed the same to provide plastic and reconstructive surgery in Uganda and train local medical staff. Around 15 regular volunteers and hundreds of supporters in both Uganda and the UK help organise, fundraise and promote Interface Uganda's work. The charity is run entirely by volunteers. Every penny raised goes directly towards improving Uganda's healthcare and helping patients. In Uganda, patients have to pay for their healthcare. From clinical assessments to x-rays, surgery to physiotherapy, aftercare to medication. Costs can quickly build up, especially if a stay in hospital is required. Often, a patient's family, friends and community will contribute what they can. If a patient still can't afford treatment, Interface Uganda can help fund the rest of their bill. Many of the patients Interface Uganda supports are treated at Korsu Hospital in Kampala. Matthias Wabwe is the hospital's social worker. A big part of his job is finding money to help the poorest patients. <laughs> Interface has really helped uh, in funding most expensive surgeries of patients we have here. I mean, men have, have been able to get uh, surgery here, which they wouldn't have had anywhere else if it wasn't for Interface's funding. That I can assure you. The, the money that Interface puts in is in the millions. So Interface always comes in to help in paying for bigger and expensive surgeries that uh, our poor patients cannot easily afford. Meet Maria. She was born with bilateral syndactyly. Her mother explains. Oh, she had yes. joined fingers like this. That's how she was produced. Surgeons divided Maria's fingers and physiotherapists created a splint. This is Christopher and this was his arm. 
With limited resources, medical staff were unable to diagnose Christopher's condition. What was clear is that his limb was useless, drew unwanted attention, and weighed the same as two and a half litres of water. To improve Christopher's quality of life, his arm was amputated. That arm wasn't functional. He asked for the amputation. He even knew the level he wanted it to be cut to. It was just a dead huge 2.2 kilogram mass and not functioning, just there. And eight-month-old Solomon. Born with Apert syndrome, a rare genetic disorder, Solomon's head, feet and hands are developing abnormally. His fingers are fused together, making basic tasks such as writing or picking up food to feed himself virtually impossible. Surgeons from Interface Uganda and Corsu were able to separate some of Solomon's fingers. Now he can grip, pinch and hold things much more easily. Until 2001, there were no trained Ugandan plastic surgeons. If people had an injury, disability or deformity, they had to live with it, often suffering from severe pain, embarrassment and, if their condition left them unable to work, destitution. Today, there are at least six trained Ugandan plastic surgeons. Interface Uganda has supported most of them. George Galiwango began training as a plastic surgeon in 2006. He's now fully qualified and head of the plastics department at Corsu. At the inception of my training as a plastic surgeon, I met members of Interface Uganda and they've been pivotal in supporting me both financially and um, ways to become the plastic surgeon that I am. Some of my equipment that I use as a surgeon were bought by Interface Uganda funds and the friendships that formed by Interface Uganda team members are also helpful in helping me develop my surgical career. And by funding complex cases, Interface Uganda also helps George and other surgeons improve their skill set. Those patients usually are those that have big, big tumours or complex reconstruction cases that otherwise would not be done. But if Interface Uganda pays for that, then I'm able to also build my repertoire. Interface Uganda is currently supporting two more trainee surgeons, as well as physiotherapists, nurses and other healthcare workers. The charity also facilitates and funds study trips for local medical staff who take skills learned abroad back to Uganda. Christine Tasume is a physiotherapist at Corsu. She spent two weeks at the Royal Devon and Exeter Hospital. The trip overall was uh, very exciting and I learned a lot. The training we have is not sufficient, so it was quite an eye-opener. I got to see several conditions that we don't normally see here. I got to go into theatre, so it helped explain more Interface practically covered everything. The flight, they organized my stays. I came back and I was able to handle the patients I couldn't handle before. Interface Uganda organizes teams from the UK to work and teach in Uganda. Doctors, nurses, anaesthetists, occupational and physiotherapists visit Uganda regularly. Plastic surgeon Vikram Devraj has been to Uganda seven times to operate and teach. He describes a typical day. The day is divided into um, seeing new patients in clinic and then deciding which patients would be suitable for surgery and then operate on them and most of the day is involved in teaching. There are two trainees that Interface Uganda sponsor, both have been with me all day and it's a chance to exchange ideas and impart knowledge. The whole ethos behind it is to train, is to train nurses, to train therapists, to train surgeons so they can be independent and work autonomously in a country that has huge need. How have the trainee surgeons found the UK team's visit? Very, very useful, very educative. It's good to see that they come, I believe, from the same mindset and idea of 
helping us out and helping the whole of you know Uganda out. Sending a team has been quite helpful. They've been very informative, very funny, very good people to work with. And it's been a joy to be with them and learn from them. Just to be mentored and inspired by, uh, by them. This patient was treated by a visiting team. This is Sarah, who's 21, and she's a student. And she's um, had an injury about two, over two weeks ago with a, a boda boda. And it was an injury that sliced through her entire wrist and forearm. Together, surgeons from Uganda and the UK operated on 11 tendons, two nerves and two major blood vessels. And they've all been repaired now since we were here on our trip. And I hope that these work and work really well to give her power and grip so she can use her right hand. Sarah's aunt shares her story. When I reached there, I find her the horror of the body's blood. I first got scared, I thought that maybe she got cut on the stomach. I was like, why I screamed so much? You can't even believe it. The guy told us she needs an operation. And they said if we take long, she will lose the hand because it's getting rotten. That's when we came up and we find you saying they are going to operate her, which we are appreciating and a pleasure. We have the hope that she's going to get healed. If they had cut off the hand, I don't know what could happen. We are so happy about it. For over a decade, Interface Uganda has helped thousands of patients get life-changing treatment and created a valuable legacy of medical training and good practice. With Uganda's population rapidly rising, hospitals and medical centres must be able to meet an ever-increasing demand. Interface Uganda is helping the country's healthcare go in the right direction. Big up to Interface. Uh, I'm really happy that Interface has come on board, it has been on board, uh, and I pray it continues being around to support our poor patients. I love Interface Uganda. Thank you.